Today, we're going to start an amazing journey through Africa. We are going to visit all of its countries and we'll learn the capitals, flags, and most beautiful places of the continent. And we're also going to explore fundamental information about its history, geography, demographics, and economy. So from Egypt to South Africa, and from Senegal to Somalia, welcome to the countries of Africa. Africa is the continent with the highest number of countries in the world, with 54 nations in total. It is also the third largest continent, comprising about 20% of Earth's total land area, and the second most populous continent on the planet, with almost 20% of the global population. So, let's visit this beautiful and diverse continent, country by country, starting in the north. We'll begin with Morocco, with its capital in Rabat. The official languages here are Moroccan and Amazigh. Morocco is the southern neighbor of Spain, with which it maintains a difficult relationship, as well as with Mauritania and Algeria. Morocco has an interesting imperialist issue called Greater Morocco. According to many Moroccans, Morocco should include all of this territory, which includes parts of Algeria, parts of Mali, and the entirety of Mauritania, all of Western Sahara, and the Spanish cities of Ceuta and Melilla. Obviously, these ambitions are not well liked by its neighbors. In today's political sphere, Morocco only claims the Western Sahara, and the Spanish enclaves in the north, but these territorial tensions continue to poison its international relations. However, politics aside, Morocco is a country of great beauty and rich culture, proudly displaying scenic places like the old city of Marrakech, the tiny blue town of Shefshaoun, or the adobe-built city of Ait Ben Habu. Just south is the contentious nation of Western Sahara, which has its capital in Aiyun. The official languages are Arabic and Spanish. And it's believed it should be an independent country, but it's occupied by Morocco. It was a Spanish colony until about 50 years ago, and then the UN began convincing colonial powers to abandon their colonies, and Spain finally capitulated. Then, Morocco invaded the area. Morocco claims it's a part of its country, the aforementioned Greater Morocco. But the UN says a referendum should be held for the Sahrawis to decide if they want to be independent or Moroccan. But Morocco, which effectively controls the country, refuses to hold any referendum. So, independence remains elusive for this North African country, but it is recognized enough to get a mention in this video. Next up, Algeria has its capital in the city of Algiers. The official languages are Algerian and Tamazigh. The northern part of the country has a Mediterranean climate similar to southern European countries, but the south is mostly part of the vast Sahara Desert. Notably, Algeria is the 10th largest country in the world and the largest African country. To its side, we find Tunisia, and it has its capital in the city of Tunis, with the official language being Tunisian. Here, you can find the ruins of the famous city of Carthage, the power that fought several wars against ancient Rome and eventually fell to them. The Romans destroyed the city, but remnants of its impressive harbor can still be traced back. Additionally, in Tunisia, you'll find the village of Tatooine. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because it was a location used to film scenes of the planet Tatooine in the original Star Wars film. Libya has its capital in the city of Tripoli. 
and Arabic is the official language. While Libya is the first country we've seen to have Arabic as its language, all the previous countries seen before have languages based on Arabic and are really quite similar. Since the Islamic expansion in the Middle Ages, North Africa became heavily influenced by Arabic culture. In this region, most of the population speaks Arabic, but the language, divided through thousands of kilometers along the North African coast, has developed many variations over the centuries. Languages like Moroccan, Algerian, or Tunisian are dialects of the Arabic language, quite similar, but with distinct differences that set them apart. Libya is a country with enormous reserves of oil and gas, like many other regions in North Africa that hold large reserves of hydrocarbons. During the 60s and 70s, Libya was flourishing on this fossil fuel money, becoming a wealthy country, the richest country of Africa and even one of the richest in the world. Its GDP per capita was even higher than that of the EU, or at sometimes even the United States. But the party could only go on for so long. After many attempts at military coups and other causes, instability has stricken the nation, including two civil wars over the past decades. Egypt has its capital in Cairo, and Arabic is the official language. Thanks to the super fertile Nile River, Egypt is the second most populous country in Africa. The country is one of those places we've all heard of, especially because of the ancient Egyptian civilization. You know these things, the pyramids, the Sphinx of Giza, the Temple of Abu Simbel, the Tomb of Tutankhamun, and of course, the Nile, that marvel of nature that has allowed Egypt's survival for millennia. As the historian Herodotus once said, Egypt is a gift of the Nile. If you pay attention, you'll notice that the majority of the population in these countries lives in the north, where it rains more and it's possible to farm and generally survive. However, the southern area is practically uninhabited because it's covered by the arid and inhospitable Sahara Desert. Mauritania has its capital in Nouakchott, and Arabic is the most spoken language. A large part of the country is covered by the Sahara Desert, so most of the population lives in the south, where it is a bit greener and you'll find some moisture. We will identify the same pattern across Sahara nations, in the north, with its desert climate, it's sparsely populated. So, the population concentrates in the south, in the tropical areas where it rains more, and life is a bit easier. Mali has its capital in Bamako. French is the official language here, but dozens of local languages are also spoken. And for a while, we've had Arabic or Arabic-derived languages as the official languages. But why is French the official language in Mali, a country that's really far from France? Let's talk a little bit about its history. For thousands of years, the Sahara Desert was more or less an impassable barrier. So large empires of the northern side like Carthage, Rome, or the Abbasid Empire never dared to conquer beyond the dunes. So. The north was under the influence of big Mediterranean powers, but the south remained isolated, with independent cultures that had little contact with those further north. But everything changed in the 19th century. Most of the continent was conquered and colonized by European colonial powers in the so-called scramble for Africa. The United Kingdom, France, Portugal, Germany, Belgium, Italy, and Spain colonized most of the continent to use its resources and send them back to Europe. Only Ethiopia managed to remain independent over this period. This period of colonization lasted for almost 100 years, and this is the reason why many African countries speak the language of the former colonizer. 
but coming back to Mali, it boasts an impressive site such as the historic center of the city of Timbuktu or the medieval mosque of Dijin. Niger has its capital in Niamey and gets its name from the Niger River. French is also the official language here. Right next to it is Chad, whose capital is in Jemena, and it gets its name from Lake Chad. Arabic and French are two official languages. First, the Chadian and the Romanian flags are almost indistinguishable. And second, since finding Chad on a map can be difficult, there's a small trick you can use. You just need a map with the borders of all of the African countries, and then... Aha, there it is. But now, let's talk about Lake Chad. Just a fair warning, this isn't the happiest story. This tiny area here is Lake Chad. This lake is located deep in the heart of a desert biome just south of the Sahara. Only a few rivers empty into it, and without very much water. The use of its water for agriculture is causing its water supply to decrease year after year, shrinking its size. It's alarmingly similar to the environmental disaster of the Aral Sea in Asia, another large lake that is on the brink of disappearing entirely. Just a few decades ago, in satellite images, we can see that Lake Chad was much larger, but now it's slowly disappearing, making prospects of living there much less tenable. Sudan has its capital in Khartoum. Arabic and English are the official languages. Until recently, Sudan was a single country, but there's a movement for independence in the South that led to a long civil war. Finally, in 2011, the South gained independence forming South Sudan with its capital in Juba, and English is its official language. Civil wars are a chronic issue in many African countries. Every conflict has its own causes, but as a general rule, we can find that many states are plurinational, meaning they have many different ethnic groups that sometimes have a hard time tolerating each other. Many secessionist movements are initiated just to control natural resources and sack the country's rich supply of these valuable assets. In this map, we can see that most of the country's oil fields are located in the south of Sudan. So it's not a coincidence that that was the part that seceded. But now, once again, South Sudan is caught in yet another civil war. Every warlord wants to control the rich reserves of oil and increase their wealth, even if that means the deaths of millions of people. Events like this explain why South Sudan, despite its wealth of resources, is amongst the poorest countries in the world. Eritrea has its capital in Asmara. It doesn't have an official language, but many languages are spoken there. Right next to it is Ethiopia, with its capital in Addis Ababa. Ethiopia is a very diverse country that has several official languages. And it also has impressive places such as the rock-hewn churches of Lalibela. They are not built, but rather carved into the rock itself. It also has the Aksum Obelisk, which is 1,700 years old, and the country is traversed by the Great Rift Valley, the tectonic valley where a significant part of human evolution is believed to have taken place. There, archaeologists found the remains of our ancient ancestor Lucy, an Australopithecus who is hairy but also quite seductive.
This small country near Ethiopia is Djibouti, with its capital in the city of Djibouti. Arabic and French are the most spoken languages. And you might find it interesting that the most popular musician in this country is DJ Ibuti. Get it? DJ Ibuti? You see, it's funny because it starts with DJ and then... And then... Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that one. It won't happen again. Maybe. An interesting fact about Djibouti is that despite its small size, many countries, including the US, China, and France, among others, have military bases there. This is due to its location on the strategic Bab el Mandab Strait, which allows much global trade through the Suez Canal from the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean. Somalia has its capital in Mogadishu. Somalian and Arabic are the official languages. Sadly, Somalia is the modern example of a failed state. The government has only limited control of the country, and the rest is fragmented into parts controlled by warlords. Constant clashes and poverty have led to modern piracy, with pirates hijacking ships along its coasts and demanding ransoms for their release. Kenya has its capital in Nairobi. Swahili and English are the most spoken languages here. The country's name comes from Mount Kenya, which is the second tallest mountain in Africa. This country is known for its pristine savannas, where lions, giraffes, wildebeests, and gazelles all roam free, making it a hot spot for wealthy tourists. Tanzania's capital is Dodoma. Swahili, English, and Arabic are the official languages. The territory was previously known as Tanganyika, but it joined with Zanzibar in 1964 to make what the country is today. Tanzania shares the same type of landscapes as Kenya, so both nations are famous safari destinations. However, Tanzania is home to Mount Kilimanjaro, a massive volcano that is the tallest mountain in Africa. In Tanzania, and shared with Kenya and Uganda, is Lake Victoria, the largest lake on the continent. All right, so let's pay close attention because there are three small countries coming up. The first one is the Republic of Likes, with its capital in the city of Subscribe. Obviously, I'm, I'm kidding, but if you are enjoying the video, a small action like clicking like, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell helps immensely. So if you do, thank you very much. Now, seriously, the first country is Uganda, with its capital in Kampala. They mainly speak English and Swahili. Then we have Rwanda, with its capital in Kigali, and they have several official languages. And finally, we have Burundi, with its capital in the city of Gitega. People speak English, French, and Kitegi. Until not so long ago, Burundi's capital was Bujumbura, but it has been changed. And sadly, despite its beauty, Burundi is not only the poorest country in Africa, but also the poorest country in the world. Mozambique has its capital in Maputo. The official language is Portuguese, but there are many other regional languages. Now, this country has a very interesting and detailed flag, so pay close attention. It has a Kalashnikov symbolizing the defense of the homeland, a Ho symbolizing agriculture, and a Book symbolizing education. That's pretty cool, right? So let's check out what their literacy rate is. 
In countries like the USA, Cuba, or France, more than 99% of the population can read and write. In Africa, some top countries like South Africa or Namibia are around 90%, but in Mozambique, the rate is less than 60%. Actually, it's one of the countries with the lowest literacy rates in the world. If we were to believe in the symbolism of the flag, we could say that they've been lying to us. Right next to it is Malawi, with its capital in Lilongwe. The official languages are English and Chewa. And this territory was previously known as Nyasa land. Zambia has its capital in Lusaka, and English is its official language. The territory was previously known as Northern Rhodesia. Zambia's most famous landmark is without a doubt Victoria Falls one of the most spectacular sights on the continent, if not the whole world. Zimbabwe has its capital in Harare. There are many official languages, with English being a kind of lingua franca. This country, south of former northern Rhodesia, was formerly known as believe it or not, Rhodesia. In Zimbabwe, you can find the Matobo National Park, which is quite fascinating. If you're a geology enthusiast like me, you will absolutely blow your mind with its granite rock formations. I mean, just look at it. Look at that tour. Look at that balancing rock. Look at that dome. Look at that boulder. All of these fantastic rock formations are nestled in a savanna environment with rhinos and other awesome fauna. Incredible to say the least. Botswana has its capital in Gaborone. English is the official language here. It was previously known as Bekwana land. In this country, you'll find the fabulous Okavango Delta. The Okavango isn't a regular river. It's Endereye, which means it doesn't flow into the sea or ocean, but rather drains into an inland basin. The Okavango River pours its waters into a vast floodplain, forming a shallow but enormous wetland where a multitude of different species of animals migrate every year. Madagascar has its capital in Antananarivo, and its languages are French and Malagasy. Malagasy is an Austronesian language originating in Southeast Asia. Based on previous African countries, you can guess that the French comes from the French colonial period. But why are they speaking a language with Asian roots? Archaeological evidence suggests that even if human beings originated in Africa, the island of Madagascar remained uninhabited until approximately the 6th century AD. At that point, Malay people sailed across the Indian Ocean to Madagascar and settled there. So many Malagasy people have a Malay ancestry. Madagascar is also one of the most uniquely biodiverse countries in the world, being home to many species that can be found nowhere else. There, you can find the famous baobab forests, ring-tailed lemurs, and tomato frogs. Near Madagascar, there are several archipelagos. The Comoros Islands, with its capital in Moroni. They speak Comorian, French, and Arabic. Next is Mauritius, with its capital in Port Louis. Mauritian Creole, a derivation from French, is the most spoken language. It is one of the most properous countries of Africa and is also considered one of the best democracies of the continent as well. And last, we have Seychelles, with its capital in Victoria. 
They speak English, French, and Seychellois Creole. Seychelles is simultaneously the least populated country of Africa and the richest country of the continent. But why is this tiny country so prosperous? Namely, it has low levels of corruption, a small population, and, cheat code activated, it also has oil. Anyway, as we have seen, having oil doesn't automatically make you a rich country, since corruption can effectively limit the prosperity for the country as a whole. But Seychelles seems to have worked around this issue. Alright, now back to the mainland. So, take a look here. This is the very south end of Africa. Now, could you guess what the name of this country could be? The name is... South Africa! Yes, I know, not very creative, but very convenient and certainly aptly named. In South Africa, they like to show off, and they don't just have one or two, but three capitals, each of them a seat to one of the three branches of the government. But we'll only mention Pretoria, where the government, that is to say the executive power, is located. English is the most spoken language, but in total there are 11 official languages, and dozens of regional languages. For decades, South Africa was under a racist regime called apartheid, where white people had more rights and wealth than black people. Eventually, in the 1990s, thanks to Nelson Mandela and many others, the apartheid system fell, and black people achieved legal equality to white people, at least on paper. However, you might wonder, why are white people even in South Africa, and how did they seize power there? The original population of the region was, like almost every other sub-Saharan African country, black. But in the 17th century, it was colonized by the Netherlands. Thousands of Dutch migrated to the Cape Colony, since its Mediterranean climate was, compared to the Netherlands itself, quite good for agriculture. Later on, the colony was controlled by Britain, and European migration continued. And that is how such a distant region from Europe was heavily populated by white people. After independence, the white settlers who were substantially wealthier secured political power and created the apartheid system that we already talked about. But aside from this complex history, South Africa has inspiring landscapes, beautiful animals, and vibrant cities like Cape Town. Within South Africa, there are two small landlocked states, Lesotho, with its capital in Maseru, and Iswatini, with its capital in Mbabane. Iswatini was known for a long time as Swaziland, but in 2018, they changed the name. All in all, I think the name change was probably a good thing, since some people confuse Swaziland with Switzerland, and sometimes even Sweden. And I hope you're not one of them. And even if you are, after this video, you won't be. Namibia has its capital in Windhoek. The official language is English, but there are many other recognized languages. Namibia is a country with vast deserts where you can find colossal sand dunes coming all the way up to the Atlantic Ocean, creating uniquely picturesque landscapes. Angola has its capital in Luanda. Portuguese is the official language, but there are also some other regional languages. In the northern part of the country, you can visit the ruins of Mabanza, Congo, an ancient capital of the Kingdom of Congo, one of the most important pre-colonial African kingdoms. This Congo kingdom extended into neighboring countries which share the same name. On one side, we have the Democratic Republic of the Congo, with its capital in Kinshasa. French is the most spoken language, but in such a vast country, there are many regional languages. And in a country that includes the word democratic in its name, 
You would imagine that it would be a well-functioning democracy without corruption, where people live freely and vote happily. Well, actually, it is considered one of the least democratic countries in the world. Its democracy index is similar to China or Iran. So most people don't even think that the Democratic Republic of the Congo can be considered a democracy. Once again, we have all been lied to. And right next to it is the Republic of Congo, with its capital in Brazzaville. French is the official language, but two other languages are also considered official. Both countries, the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo, get their name from the Congo River, which they both share on either side for a long stretch. The Congo Basin is one of the areas on the planet with the most precipitation. It is covered by dense equatorial forests, where chimpanzees and gorillas, which are endangered species, live naturally. The Congo Basin has eight beautiful natural parks, but six of them are heavily protected due to illegal hunting and poaching. Gabon has its capital in Libreville. French is the official language here. Right next to it is Equatorial Guinea, with its capital in Malabo. Interestingly, it's the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa. It is one of the wealthiest countries in Africa, thanks in large part to oil. But the reality is that it is a small country with very high inequality. A small minority holds most of the wealth, while most of the population remains extremely poor. And I'm going to ask you not to confuse Equatorial Guinea with Ecuador, or the equator itself, the imaginary line that divides the world into two hemispheres. As you can see, the line goes right through these countries, hence their names. Going off the mainland, we have Sao Tome and Principe which is a tiny archipelago off the western coast. They speak Portuguese, and the capital is Sao Tome. You might not be surprised to know that this country is made up of two main islands, Sao Tome Island and, believe it or not, Principe Island. Bruh. One of the most awesome places of this country is Pico Cal Grande, a massive volcanic plug peak that rises more than 300 meters over the surrounding terrain. Cameroon has its capital in Yaoundé. They mainly speak English and French, but there are many other regional languages. And despite its small size, they foster a large amount of athletic talent. It is the country that has won the second most times in the African Cup football competition. Now, take a look here. This is more or less the center of Africa. So, can you guess what this country is called? That's right, the name is... Central African Republic. Yes, I know, not very creative, but like South Africa, very convenient. The capital is Bangui, and there are two official languages. Sango and French. This nation is rich in natural resources and should on paper be prosperous, but it has experienced two civil wars in the last 20 years, making it instead one of the poorest countries of the world. Nigeria has its capital in Abuja. English is the official language here. Nigeria is notably the most populated country in Africa and ranks seventh globally with over 230 million inhabitants. It's also one of the world's largest oil producers. Burkina Faso has its capital in Ouagadougou. 
and French is the lingua franca, but there are also other national languages. Previously, it was known as Upper Volta. Alright guys, while we've been through a lot of countries so far, to be honest, we've been in easy mode. Countries were big and unique and easy to identify and find on the map. But now, now it's time to get serious and things are gonna get complicated, okay? What comes next is no longer easy mode, it's hard mode. Time for experts only. This archipelago over here is Cape Verde with its capital in Praia. They speak Portuguese. It's a group of volcanic islands with diverse landscapes ranging anywhere from deserts to jungles. Senegal has its capital in Dakar. They speak French here. Formerly, the Dakar Rally went from Paris crossing Spain and North Africa all the way down to Dakar. But since 2008, the presence of terrorist groups in the region has made the race increasingly dangerous. So, since then, the name has stayed the same, but the race has been relocated to other parts of the world, such as South America or Saudi Arabia. This small and elongated country over here is the Gambia, with its capital in Banjul. They speak English. This country seems really funny to me, not only because it's completely surrounded by Senegal, but also because the country is basically just the Gambia River and its banks. It's as if in Europe there was a Republic of the Thames or the Republic of the Danube, just on either side of the river. Guinea-Bissau has its capital in Bissau. They speak Portuguese. And right next to it is Guinea, with its capital in Conakry. They speak French. The country is sometimes referred to as Guinea-Conakry to distinguish it from Guinea-Bissau or Equatorial Guinea. But even with that addition, you could still easily get confused with the Gulf of Guinea, Papua New Guinea, Guinea pigs, or even the coins called guineas. Bruh. Sierra Leone has its capital in Freetown. English is the most spoken language. Sierra Leone is one of the world's leading diamond producers, but due to exploitation of resources, is also one of the poorest countries. Liberia has its capital in Monrovia. They also speak English here. Both Liberia and Sierra Leone have a similar origin. They were founded by the United Kingdom in the United States to free the slaves who had been taken to America to work on plantations. After the abolition of slavery, instead of trying to racially integrate slaves into their countries or taking them back to the regions of origin, they decided to send them to these two territories without caring about the opinion of the locals. In the end, the idea didn't work out that well because, in general, the former slaves didn't want to go to these areas. So, well done, America. Ivory Coast has its capital in Yamasukro. In here, they speak French. Ghana has its capital in Accra. They mainly speak English here. During the colonial period, it was known as the Gold Coast. And finally, we finish with the two remaining African countries. First, we have Togo, which has its capital in Lomé. They mainly speak French, and this region was previously known as Togoland. And last, but certainly not least, we have Benin, whose capital is in Porto Novo. French is the official language here. Porto Novo is the definition of a clickbait capital. If that's confusing, let me explain real quick. 
Porto Novo means new port in Portuguese, okay? But, first of all, they don't even speak Portuguese, they speak French. Second, the city is far from the sea, so it doesn't even have a port. And third, it was founded 500 years ago, so it's not even new either. So, once again, they have lied to us. Benin was previously known as Dahomey. There even existed a kingdom of Dahomey, known worldwide by its army of women Amazon warriors. Oh, finally, here we are. After all of those countries, we have at long last come to the end. If you want to continue learning more about the geography of our world and its history, I recommend that you like this video, click on the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel where we have a lot more videos like these. And don't forget to leave a comment on the video letting us know whether you enjoyed it or what was the most interesting thing you learned. In any case, we want to hear from you. So if you've made it this far, thank you so, so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.